Good evening and uh, welcome to the first quarter uh, financial year 2024-2025 uh, financial results presentation of uh, <coughs> Reliance Industries. Uh, as always, we will have Srikant walk you to walk you through uh, the consolidated uh, <coughs> performance of the quarter, followed by Anshuman Thakur who will uh, give you the most overview of uh, Geo's performance, Dinesh Tharuja on retail. Sanjay Roy on uh, ENP, then uh, Shrikant will come back to talk about O2C and uh, summarize our performance. So, over to you, Shrikant. Uh, thanks, thanks, Shrini, and uh, good evening to all of you. Uh, starting with the uh, performance, uh, EBITDA at 42,748, up 2% year on year. Um, th- this is uh, important for me to say that uh, the growth in consumer business and strong upstream offset uh, weak O2C. Uh, On retail, uh, we have seen a growth led by grocery and consumer electronics and also um, improvements in the overall customer engagement as well as on uh, contribution from digital channels. On uh, digital side, uh, benefits coming from healthy subscriber addition and also uh, increasing FTTH penetration. Overall, uh, on the O2C side, uh, we will see it later on, but, uh, you know, clearly decline in fuel cracks and uh, uh, challenging downstream margin environment. In oil and gas, uh, led by higher volumes, uh, which uh, which was offset a little bit by lower price realization. So the for us, the diversified uh, portfolio helped uh, deliver this performance, uh, with consumer being more than half of the overall earnings. Uh, specifically on retail, you can see uh, revenues at uh, almost 76,000 crores, EBITDA about 5,700 crores. They are up about 8 and 8% and about 10.5%. Overall PAT at 2,549 up close to 5%. And you can see some of the uh, uh, operational metrics like footfall, uh, 296 million up 19%. Um, registered customer base at 316 up 18%. Uh, when you look at uh, revenue and EBITDA growth, uh, uh, it, uh, it, in, it uh, includes the fact that uh, we had a, a strong uh, consumer electronics, uh, uh, you know, business growth, um, specifically ACs and refrigerators and TV. Um, we also had strong performance in grocery uh, stores. Some of the uh, sales that we did uh, showed um, high traction with almost uh, 30% year-on-year growth. Um, however, uh, it, on fashion and lifestyle, it was much more tepid uh, with uh, discretionary demand being lower uh, there. So that in, kind, in some sense, uh, that was the bizarre uh, consumer electronics and grocery, it was on the lower side. The revenue and EBITDA growth also uh, um, covers for the fact that, uh, you know, we, there was a streamlining of operations with focus on margin improvement. And as you can see, Year on year, there has been an improvement of margin by almost 30 basis points at eight and a half percent. Also, when you look at uh, the, while the cross ads were at 331, you can see that the net ads were about 82 stores. So the, uh, also the performance uh, covers for the fact that, uh, you know, we continue to focus on enhancing the tech platform, focus on supply chain and distribution capabilities. This is more from for us to maintain our gross moment, the growth momentum both in the near and medium term. So for us, uh, you know, strengthening the market leadership in a in a structurally long term growth industry. That's really what has been the focus here. On digital side, uh, revenues and EBITDA up. Uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, revenues at 12.8 and 11.6 percent for EBITDA, almost 15,000 crores of EBITDA. This is on the back of uh, subscriber addition. We added uh, 41 million on a year-on-year basis and 8 million in just this quarter. Data traffic uh, data, you can see it's about almost 33% at uh, 44.1 billion GB. And uh, 130 million subscribers uh, migrated to Geo through 5G. And uh, Sanjuman will cover, uh, you know, we are now at this level, we are the largest uh, operator in the world when you look at data capacity. And what we handle, also I would, uh, you know, we'd be the second largest in terms of 5G uh, uh, subscribers. So, um, and as you know, the the tariff uh, hike happened, and the benefits of the tariff hike will be seen in the coming quarters. On the O2C side, uh, 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 as you can see, 13,100 crores EBITDA, uh, lower 14% on a year-on-year basis. Uh, 
And that is primarily driven by gasoline cracks, which was down 30%. PP was down, PP was down anywhere between 16 to 17%. Polyester chain integrated deltas were also lowered by 15%. This was, uh, um, uh, these are big products and, uh, you know, you could see the, uh, these are big falls in terms of margin, but it was partially offset by the fact that we continue to benefit from being able to crack ethane and also, uh, the domestic demand both for oil, polymer, polyester held well. Overall, when you see the performance, uh, you know, uh, energy markets, you're seeing this kind of, uh, volatility in earnings, uh, you know, different points in time. It is geopolitics. It's weather. It is outages. It's refining capacity. So when you look back over the last uh, eight quarters, you know, we have seen EBITDA ranging anywhere between 12,000 crores to 20,000 crores. And, um, but overall, uh, fair to say that the structural drivers of the business uh, remains fairly very constructive. And um, uh, so uh, therefore, uh, uh, it, uh, these performances, uh, this performance would have to be seen in the, in that context. Oil and gas, uh, 5,210 crores of EBITDA, it's up 30%. Uh, this was on the back of, uh, uh, volume increase, as you can see, KGD6 production up 44% on a year on year basis. However, there was a price correction of, uh, decrease of about 14%, uh, resulting in a net EBITDA of 30%. Overall, uh, we now have uh, gas of almost 29 m CMD. It was used to be 20 same time last year and uh, oil and condensate production of almost 22,000 barrels per day. This is the overall financial results as I was highlighting to you. Uh, EBITDA, uh, sorry, revenue at 2 lakh 58,000 crores up 11 and a half percent. As you know, both uh, because of O2C revenues being higher because oil prices were much higher than what it was a uh, year back. Also, it is also on the back of growth in retail. Uh, EBITDA, we spoke about uh, overall growth of 2% with consumer businesses more than offsetting the sharp reduction in uh, O2C performance uh, given the broader operating context there. And uh, uh, therefore, you could see the translation coming to in terms of PAT at 17,500, which was lower by 4.5% on a year-on-year basis. Just the bridge, uh, uh, when you see year-on-year uh, -year comparison, I talked about uh, Cracks, gasoline, PEPP, polyester chain being lower. Uh, uh, I talked about oil and gas uh, benefiting from higher volume, but uh, to some extent offset by lower price there. Retail benefiting from uh, store expansion and increasing footfalls. Uh, digital side benefiting from customer ad. Uh, I mentioned about 41 million year on year. And also the fact that people are using more, a 33% increase in data traffic now per, per user per month is almost 30 GB per customer. So you're seeing a good traction in terms of consumption of uh, services. On the quarter on quarter side, uh, predominantly what to see and hear that the product mix was slightly different in the sense that the fall, the big fall you saw was really in gasoline, gas oil and ATF, which was down about 36 to 37%. There was, there was actually a, a uptick in terms of downstream with uh, PVC up 17% and PE up 7%. Uh, oil and gas was marginal declines in volume that we saw and realization also was marginally lower. Uh, on retail, uh, uh, the effect of lower discretionary spend, especially on fashion and lifestyle, and the fact that uh, I referred to the streamlining of operations and the focus on some of the uh, other areas that I talked about. And digital services, uh, a strong traction with 8 million customers being added on the network. And also good traction on uh, geo air fiber, which Anshman will talk about. Um, overall, uh, net debt at about a lakh and twelve thousand crores versus a lakh and sixteen thousand two eighty one in March, and uh, capex overall twenty nine thousand crores, which is uh, much lesser than the cash profits that we have been generating, and also significantly lower than the capex of close to thirty nine thousand, which we had uh, same time last year. Overall net debt EBITDA well within the very conservative framework that we have. So we have the balance sheet strength uh, to, to deliver on some of the growth initiatives that we have. And importantly, for generating value. With this, uh, I'm handing it over to Anshman. Thank you, Shrikan. Good evening, everyone. I'll take you through the results of the digital services business and geo. In terms of the highlights for the quarter, 
The JPL consolidated revenues came in at 29,449 crores, which was a growth of 12.8% YOY, um, and EBITDA at 14,638 crores. So fairly healthy growth driven by, you know, combination of things. The operating performance was good. Subscriber uptake of new services was good. Um, and we see, continue to see good traction um, across all of the services, service offerings. The subscriber base uh, for the quarter ended at 489.7 million, which was a net addition of 8 million for the quarter. Uh, the 5G subscriber base uh, was close to 130 million, which makes Geo the, uh, uh, the largest 5G subscriber base uh, outside of China. ARPU for the quarter came in at 181.7 rupees, which was almost at the same level as the last previous quarter. Um, again, a combination of things here, uh, uh, some improvement because of uh, increased utilization, but uh, given the, the promotional uh, efforts at this point in time for promoting 5G consumption, uh, they, there was an impact on ARPU. Um, I, I would just remind you that the, this does not factor in any of the tariff increase. The tariff increase happened after the quarter had ended. On the data consumption itself, we saw a very healthy uh, growth trend, 33% year-on-year increase in data traffic uh, at 45, almost close, 44, and um, a bit over 44 exabyte for the quarter, which now makes us, makes Geo the world's largest operator in terms of data traffic. And this is uh, compared with uh, all of the other operators. So not, you know, that excluding China qualifier does not apply here. Uh, also, 5G now accounts for 31% of the overall wireless data traffic. So very healthy growth in 5G. Uh, the subscribers are consuming a lot of uh, data and uh, the per capita data consumption is growing fairly, fairly rapidly. On the fixed wireless or the homes front, our FTTH business continues to do well and grow uh, uh, healthily. Uh, the fixed wireless business is also, we crossed a million connections there. And the performance has been very steady. The data consumption, customer engagement matrices are all very healthy. We continue to build on the number one position that we have in home broadband services with more than 60% share of the industry in intact. So all in all, fairly healthy, good, robust performance, good growth. Uh, the growth momentum being driven by the 5G mobility and air fiber, like very high data consumption uptake. Uh, so, you know, the, the things that we're targeting uh, have been delivered quite well this quarter. So, we, uh, you know, as I said, the transition to 5G has been ahead of uh, schedule. People are taking up 5G services uh, very rapidly. Uh, we are already, we have the world's largest 5G subscriber base uh, outside of China at over one or close to 130 million. Um, and the 5G uh, data accounting for 31% of the overall data traffic on the geo network. All of this data is being carried on our own 5G plus 4G combo core. So this is our own network, you know, the, the uh, core of our network that Geo had put together that is carrying all, it, all of this traffic and our, our tech capabilities are getting validated on the field with uh, extremely high utilization by, you know, in terms of both number of subscribers and overall data consumption. Um, guiding on the benefits of 5G, we started launching some new services in the market as well. Uh, you would have come across some of these. GeoSafe, which is an, a, an app for ultra-secure communication, quantum level security on a 5G network. Now, given our standalone 5G network, we are able to do uh, some of these things, which would not have been possible on, on any other network, or uh, even on 5G is only possible with the con- configuration, the standalone configuration that we've got. You translate another app, which uh, with now fairly, uh, uh, you know, the quality of networks being so much better, the latency being so much lower, um, is, you know, it's time to launch some of these kind of apps and services, which are very useful for people. Uh, we have covered all of, the, almost all of the Indian languages in this app, and it's real-time conversation-like uh, uh, feeling. So I'd encourage you to go and try, try this app as well on the Geo 5G network. Moving on to the air fiber and our home offering, uh, we are continuing to push the air fiber offering. It is now available across the country, Pan India, and we're seeing demand coming Pan India from uh, not only from the metro and tier one cities, but tier two and tier three cities as well, small towns. Uh, we are seeing demand coming pretty much from all across the country, and we are being able to service that demand now with our network uh, available across the country. The run rate of uh, connecting new homes has been picking up uh, and this quarter, we have had the highest ever quarterly home connects at over 1.1 million. 
And as we keep deploying across the country, we expect to be able to connect many more homes in the in the quarters to come. The ability, I spoke about standalone 5G network, the ability to do things on that standalone network like network slicing or uh, also deploy point to multi-point uh, uh, offerings is helping us give very high throughput uh, on, and a fiber-like experience on our air fiber uh, service. And in fact, in terms of data consumption, time utilization, etc., the air fiber homes are currently keeping pace. In fact, uh, most of them are doing consuming more data than the FTTH homes, uh, and uh, the the uptake has been very very encouraging. Uh, there is clear service differentiation and um, you know innovative distribution, which is helping us increase demand for the service. Moving on to the enterprise business, where also we have been making inroads in uh, key verticals as per our strategic uh, direction. This is something we've been speaking about, uh, speaking to you about the last few quarters. We are now successfully dis- displacing competition, uh, where wherever we are getting an opportunity, as you would appreciate, enterprise deals tend to be longer tenure. So we have to wait for the opportunity where these come up for renewal and then make our entry, and we've been able to do that. We have expanded our wallet share um, beyond connectivity. So um, once again, for us, enterprise offering is a combination of uh, connectivity, but value-added services, and we have spoken about these value-added services with you in the past, which is what we take to the market, and this this would include cloud, uh, chatbot, CPaaS, uh, and uh, several vertical uh, vertical solutions that we offer to, to our clients. So we have been expanding wallet share across connectivity into these uh, other services that we are offering. We are building partner ecosystems as well to tap into opportunities, especially in some of the specialized sectors where getting access uh, through partner ecosystem is is easier and faster another service that or offering which is very uh, which is gaining traction is iot uh, and here again it's a combination of connectivity device and the software element the platform itself that we offer to our clients and we are seeing good uptake in in these uh, services as well uh, there have been cohort specific uh, propositions and in the past we've spoken with you about some of these like those for the hospitality uh, segment. So we are seeing good traction in education, manufacturing and hospitality. Uh, BFSI continues to be very strong for us and in BFSI therefore we are now leveraging on the relationships to offer more services and also tie up with some of our BFSI clients to to do more beyond uh, just providing them connectivity and some enterprise offerings. So all in all, we are seeing good traction in this uh, in the enterprise segment which is building up quite well for us. A uh, couple of updates now which happened um, during the quarter or towards the end of the quarter. One was the Tariff increase, um, you're already familiar with this. This was uh, announced and made effective from the 3rd of July. Uh, so not in the previous quarter. Um, the impact will only be seen starting this quarter. The tariff increase, you know, across the industry was in the 13 to 25% range. But uh, what we've done is uh, for the Geo Bharat and the Geo Phone, which are the entry level devices, which really are focused towards uh, our aim of 2G Muk Bharat and really transitioning all of the subscribers onto digital services and digital uh, platforms, uh, which is which is an aim that we have got. For them, there has been no change in tariff. In addition, uh, for the the 5G experience that we are currently offering is still available at no additional cost to to subscribers who have subscribed to certain plans. And this is to encourage 5G consumption on the network and people to adopt more and more of 5G services. Uh, we expect, you know, as was on expected lines, um, post a tariff increase, the other operators have also raised tariffs. So overall, the industry tariff levels have gone up. There may be some transient impact, but we think on, in the longer term, this is going to be good for the overall telecom industry and, and help build a premier digital society um, and, and strengthen the overall sector. The, the other uh, development in the previous quarter was the Spectrum auction, which happened. As we have told you in the past, uh, we have a very good Spectrum bank with us, which fulfills the requirements across all of the services that we are offering, LTE, 5G, um, whatever we are doing at home and using some of that Spectrum. So we didn't really, we had, we were very focused in acquiring more Spectrum, or right to use Spectrum, um, only in places where we had seen demand go up, the data consumption going up, and therefore, in order to ensure that the customer service never suffered, we added more spectrum in, uh, in Bihar and West Bengal in the 1800 megahertz band at a total cost of 974 crores. So we were very focused in, in looking at spectrum, which we really needed to just ensure that our customers always get the best offering. 
Uh, otherwise, we have fairly good Spectrum Bank uh, for to offer all of these services that we are doing. Our Spectrum footprint across bands, the cross or is now at 26,801 megahertz. This is combining across all of these circles uh, in the country and uplink and downlink together. Uh, you would uh, know already. I'm just reiterating that we are the only operator who is running 5G across low band, mid band, and high band, 700, 3300, and 26 gigahertz. Uh, which gives us unique advantages like career aggregation and uh, standalone network. Moving on to the operating and financial matrices, key operating metrics for RJIL, our connectivity business, we ended the quarter at 489.7 million subscribers. That's an addition of 8 million uh, for the quarter. ARPU came in at 181.7, almost similar to the last quarter um, for reasons that I already spoke about. Uh, the 5G consumption uptick, has driven data consumption to 30.3 GB per user per month. That's more than a GB per user per day. Uh, you know, something that we used to speak about uh, when we when we had just about started, that uh, consumers should be consuming more than a GB of data per day. And the voice uh, traffic also continues to be healthy. So all of the business KPIs or the operating KPIs are going healthily. Moving on to the RGIL uh, financials, this is just for the connectivity business. The operating revenues increased to 26,478 crores. That was a 10.1% year-on-year increase, and the EBITDA went up to 14,022 crores at an EBITDA margin of 53%. So um, the margins have kept on constant, uh, steadily improving and fairly consistent performance on this front. Moving on to the consolidated financials for Geo Platforms Limited, the operating revenues for the quarter came in at 29,449 crores. That was a 12.8% year-on-year growth. The EBITDA was at 14,638 crores, uh, and the mar- EBITDA margin was 49.7%. Profit after tax increased to 5,693 crore, uh, again around 11.7% year-on-year increase. So fairly steady across all of the key financial matrices as well. With that, I will hand over to Dinesh to take you through the results of the retail business. Thank you, everyone, and have a good evening. Thanks, Anshuman. Hi, good evening, everyone. For the retail business, uh, the revenue had an 8% growth year on year at 75,615 crores. EBITDA came, well, growth was at 10% at 5,664 crores. Uh, this was led by uh, growing footfalls, expansion of our store footprint, uh, as well as uh, streamlining of operations, which is driving the margin improvement. Uh, our EBITDA margin from operations came in at 8.2%, which is a 30 basis points growth on a YOI basis. All our operational metrics, whether it's registered customers, footfalls, transactions, uh, show healthy gro- growth trend. Uh, all our channels continue to grow well. Uh, digital commerce and new commerce uh, contribution stands at 18% of total revenues. We opened uh, 331 new stores uh, during the quarter uh, with a gross area addition of uh, 3.1 million square feet. Uh, the net addition was at 82 uh, for the quarter, and the total store count stands at 18,918 uh, with a total area of 81.3 million square feet. We continue to make enhancements to our technology platform, our supply chain capabilities, our distribution capabilities. All of these are putting us in a good position to sustain the growth momentum in the near and medium term. We covered this uh, revenue growth of 8% at 75,615 crores. Uh, EBIT of 5,664 crores at 10% growth and profit after tax at 2,549 crores. Moving on to, uh, the, uh, the highlights, uh, for each of the, each of the consumption baskets. The consumer electronics business had, uh, uh healthy growth on, uh, uh, average bill values as well as growth, growth in customer walk-ins. Our digital uh, stores continue to deliver steady, steady growth with 5% LFL growth. Uh, the, we had a really hot summer, so the growth in summer season was driven by ACs and refrigerators. Uh, plus, we had uh, Cricket World Cup and IPL, uh, which drove the demand for TVs. Uh, Rescue, which is our services business, uh, we launched 50 plus new centers during the quarter. Uh, we also launched on-demand services, uh, which are now available in, in 45 cities where basically customers can, uh, can, uh, book out of warranty services on the app and, uh, we will service those. Our B2B, uh, B2B2C business, JMD continues to grow across, uh, across categories. Mobile phone, uh, uh, dry is the biggest portion, but even other categories are, are growing well. Uh, we continue to expand our merchant base, which is up 14% YOY. 
Our product business uh, contain we continue to launch new products across across categories as well as grow our distribution network, uh, which is up hundred uh, percent on a YOY uh, basis. Uh, we are already uh, getting a good volume share uh, in in the overall industry as well as the share in our our own digital stores for our own products is growing steadily. Fashion lifestyle business, uh, the demand uh, for the uh, the, the uh, it has been uh, the across the industry the 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 uh, discretionary spend has been tapered. Uh, our focus has been on ensuring that we refresh the assortment, we have trendy assortment in our stores, and we continue to expand our store footprint. Our new formats, uh, Yusta, Azot, and Gap, which we had launched last year, they continue to receive very strong traction from consumers. And we are scaling up these uh, formats uh, substantially. Uh, we also announced an exclusive partnership with uh, ASOS, the fast, UK fast fashion retailer, uh, to launch their brands in India across both online and offline channels. ASOS is primarily an online uh, online uh, retailer, uh, but we will also be opening uh, the opening stores for them in India. Our online uh, fashion business, Ajio B2C, had another very steady quarter. We added close to 2 million customers during the quarter. Uh, the focus has been on differentiating by exclusive brands, exclusive products, uh, and we continue to expand our, our brand portfolio uh, with the catalog growing more than 20% on a YOY basis. Uh, we added multiple new brands across categories uh, during the quarter. Uh, also, our flagship uh, big bold sale event uh, uh, did very well. Uh, we had a uh, 20% higher traffic and 50% higher conversion versus BOU uh, during this period. Premium brands business, we continue to expand uh, expand the stores. Uh, we also look, uh, are looking at expanding into new categories. So on the FNB business, uh, we uh, opened multiple Pratamangar new stores. Uh, this is a franchise that we have uh, for India. Uh, Ajio Lux, which is the premium luxury fashion destination, uh, we had a strong growth in uh, the number of brands as well as number of options. The total uh, portfolio of luxury brands on the platform crossed uh, 700 and it is the leading platform for luxury fashion in the country. Uh, on our beauty business, as you would recollect, we, had, we have taken over the Sephora franchise for, for India. And we have done a couple of uh, big brand uh, exclusive launches uh, during the quarter. Uh, Kylie Cosmetics and uh, Rare Beauty Summer Collection. Jewel's business uh, uh, also delivered a steady growth uh, in spite of the gold prices rising substantially. Uh, we launched almost 30 new collections, uh, which helps us differentiate in the market to capitalize on both Akshay Tritya as well as the wedding season. Uh, and the business uh, continues on a steady growth path. We continue to leverage events, festivals uh, to really uh, drive uh, assortment which is relevant for the occasion. Uh, and uh, during Akshay Tritya, we had very strong growth. Grocery had another uh, steady quarter uh, led by the big box uh, format Smart and Smart Bazaar uh, and expansion into Tier 2 and beyond cities. Uh, for many of the cities, uh, we are the first modern trade uh, retailer uh, in, in those locations. In addition, uh, we are expanding our premium formats, uh, uh, signature and, and fresh pick in select affluent catchments. Uh, they offer an opportunity for uh, better margins and throughput as well as differentiate our brand. Uh, our key flagship events, uh, summer ready sale and paisa vasul sale uh, have uh, got good traction and customer engagement with healthy growth uh, uh, over the same period last year. Uh, we had broad-based growth across categories, uh, pulses, cereals, uh, non-food, general merchandise and apparel, uh, their share is growing, which is helping on margins as well. Also, uh, it was a summer season and some of the seasonal categories like cold drinks, ice creams and even some of the seasonal fruits like mango did uh, extremely well. Our B2B business, uh, Metro, uh, we continue to scale the store presence. Uh, we opened 30 new stores during the quarter, taking the total store count to 200 plus uh, with presence across 180 plus cities. Uh, this model help, enables us to offer an omni-channel uh, model uh, to the merchants uh, where they come into the stores uh, and experience uh, experience the, 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 the wide range of assortment. Plus, they can order online at the at the convenience uh, at their convenience uh, on the app as well.
Geo Mart, uh, the focus has been on enhancing the economics uh, by incru- increasing average order values, which were up uh, 16% on a YOI basis. As you are aware, it started as a grocery platform, but over the last 18 months, uh, we've kind of, uh, we've been working on uh, growing it as a multi-category horizontal platform. And uh, to the towards that objective, uh, the non-grocery categories uh, both uh, 1P as well as 3P continue to do well. Uh, electronics, uh, uh, which is a key category uh, after grocery, had a 50% growth on a uh, on a YOY basis. Uh, we continue to add new options uh, as well as the seller base uh, to expand the options which are available to the consumer so that they have a wide choice when they when they come to uh, come to the platform. We are also leveraging our hyper local presence uh, for customer acquisition. Uh, f- uh, and target them for grocery and cross sell other categories through targeted inf- interventions. Uh, we have a big advantage with our pan India store network compared to uh, any of the other online players, uh, who spend, uh, who, who spend a lot on customer acquisition. Uh, we are able to take very targeted initiatives and, and create customer stickiness, uh, uh, through an omni channel offering. Uh, we continue to improve our platform and add new functionalities. Uh, it's an ongoing, uh, ongoing endeavor to increase that, enhance the experience of the experience of the consumers. And we added some interesting uh, options uh, during the quarter. For example, you know, if you have SKUs with multiple weights, uh, there's a weight drop down based on which the customer can just select uh, what weight of, 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 of that category do, do they want. Our consumer brands business, which is one of our newer businesses, uh, continues to get very strong traction in the market. Uh, we now have multi-category presence across beverages, uh, uh, staples, home and personal care, sub, uh, you know, uh, f- processed food, etc. And across across categories, we have been launching new products, as well as we have been expanding our presence in the in the general trade channel, uh, which delivered for 150 percent of YOI growth. While the business has a big advantage of leveraging our own store network as well as the the B two B channel that we have, uh, but we are also uh, taking uh, these brands into general trade and they're getting very strong traction there. During the quarter, we launch products across multiple brands, including Campa, Independence, Maliban, Rawalgaon, etc. Uh, the idea is to have uh, have an expanded portfolio at at attractive price points. And there are multiple pilots underway, so uh, across different categories. So you see a, a host of product launches in 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 the coming quarters, which will further uh, enhance our product portfolio. Uh, we are also investing in strengthening the supply chain across categories uh, through partnering with uh, with uh, with with different players, so that we have localized supply chain, which will give us a big cost advantage uh, over other FMCG companies. That's it for our consumer brands. We can move on to the oil and gas section. Thanks, Dinesh. Uh, good evening, everyone. Just to recap uh, the performance over the last quarter. So in EBITDA, we are marginally lower for on quarter on quarter with 5,210 crores, but uh, a substantial jump year on year, almost 30%. Uh, this is mainly on the back of uh, steady production from KGD6. Um, we continue to produce around 29 million standard cubic meters of gas and about 22,000 barrels of oil and condensate. The main uh, uh, impact was felt due to the price realization in the month of April. We saw prices come in much lower, but as, as the months rolled by, um, they, you know, in the subsequent two months, we saw uh, global markets uh, you know, a price surge and accordingly, you know, we've seen better price realizations uh, over that period. Uh, CBM, uh, the good news is that we're seeing a turnaround in the field. Um, the production has been up uh, by almost 10 percent, both quarter on quarter and year on year. And uh, the 40 well multilateral well program that is currently underway is yielding positive results. Uh, we have completed 21 wells and the balanced wells are expected to be uh, put online by the year end and we expect to see an incremental 0.5 million sand cubic meters of, uh, per gas, uh, in during, in that period from these wells. All in all, a stronger bit, uh, driven by higher production and stable operations. So overall, you can see that the production has grown four times, uh, and, uh, we are currently focusing on sustaining this production, which both from KGD6 
as well as uh, ramping up production from CBM. Uh, in terms of the global markets, um, so like I mentioned, uh, it was an interesting uh, quarter. The first month, uh, you know, uh, there were headwinds. Uh, prices had gone down uh, to almost uh, the price realization was around eight dollars fifty or so. But at the time, uh, you know, with the outages uh, globally uh, in LNG terminals. Uh, as well as some of the production dis- uh, disruptions and maintenance activities that were undertaken, uh, we could see, uh, coupled with um, some of the uh, strong summer demand from Asia, particularly due to the heat waves and so on, and outages in nuclear and chem- uh, nuclear plants and chem- uh, coal plants in uh, in Asia, particularly in Japan and Korea, uh, we saw yeah, overall, you know, the supplies coming down, demand being uh, stronger. Consequently, we saw prices go all the all the way up to thirteen dollars, uh, slightly over thirteen dollars in June, um, and uh, we saw better realizations. Uh, in the short term, we expect prices to be in the uh, to be range bound. Um, we don't expect any major new LNG capacity additions, as well as there is expected to be uh, maintenance activities in the Norwegian fields. Uncertainty of the Russia pipeline supplies to Ukraine also looms largely uh, in the near term, and uh, we believe that with strong Brent prices, prices for LNG look uh, to be in a firm place. Overall, we expect prices to remain supported in the near term. Indian gas market looks quite robust. Uh, in fact, uh, LNG imports increased by 30% in the first quarter, and mainly driven by CCG demand and higher uh, gas-based power generation uh, due to the heat waves in India. Uh, in fact, uh, yeah, we almost saw uh, the consumption go up to 40 million standard cubic meters in the power sector compared to the 24 million standard cubic meters. Uh, as well as in CGD, we saw uh, the demand go up from about 37 million standard cubic meters to up to 41. So, so uh, you know, good, good demand on, in those sectors. Um, as such, in this uh, half, uh, the ceiling price remains at $9.87 uh, per MMBTU. Overall, the, uh, you know, with the pipeline infrastructure we have and surging power demand, we expect the demand to remain robust in India. Thank you. Thanks, Sanjay. So moving to the last part of the presentation for O2C, uh, EBITDA at 13,100 crores, uh, lower by 14% on a year-on-year basis and about 22% on a Q-on-Q basis. Uh, uh, as we were talking about, uh, year-on-year fall uh, is primarily because of gasoline, which was down 30%, polyethylene and polypropylene, about 16 to 17%, as well as the whole integrated polyester chain was down 15%. Uh, for us, the fact that uh, low ethane prices uh, help because of ethane cracking capabilities, and also we supported by the fact that domestic demand uh, was good, Overall, uh, you know, energy market volatility is something that we have been seeing for various set of reasons. However, uh, you know, we do think that the structural business dynamics remains uh, constructive. The extent of volatility in the markets can be gauged from the fact that last eight quarters we have seen this whole range between 12,000 crores to 20,000 crores of uh, EBITDA, uh, which is the one that we reported. On Q on Q basis, uh, again, primarily driven by this time, Transportation fuels, gasoline, gas oil, and ATF uh, down about 37%. Uh, the good news was that there was uh, some margin improvement downstream with PVC up 17%, and also P was also up 7%, which helped uh, uh, offset some of the fall that we saw on transportation fuel. Uh, continuing uh, benefit from uh, ethane cracking economics also supported in the quarter. When you look at, uh, this is the just the crude price, effectively we were looking at $85 uh, uh, per barrel in as far as first quarter was concerned, which was higher by about 9% on a year-on-year basis. And uh, overall, uh, kept higher, uh, it has been higher because of demand from emerging market. Also, the fact that OPEC plus uh, uh, OPEC supplies were on the lower side. Um, I talked about ethane economics uh, as reflected in the fact that uh, ethane prices were down 9% year on year, but at the same time, NAFTA prices increased by 16%. Uh, we did see uh, uh, regional uh, refining margins come off uh, on the back of higher runs, 
we saw new capacity ramp up in middle east and also demand environment in europe and china was muted overall uh, oil demand uh, you can see year on year up 0.7 million primarily in asia which accounts for most of the increase on the transportation fuel you can see that uh, you know gasoline gas oil was gasoline was up 0.2 million barrels per day gas oil was down 0.2 big jump was in jet caro which was up uh, 0.6 million barrels per day and more led by asia uh, in india the uh, oil demand at almost 61 million tons that was up 3 and a half percent year on year and flat q on q uh, here uh, gasoline demand was up by 7% back of tourism on back of auto industry growth in polymer uh, really led by pvc benefiting from all the government schemes on agriculture and infrastructure uh, polypropylene and was specifically consumer durables and food packaging that we saw an automotive demand and uh, uh, on the overall on the polyester side uh, uh, the big jump 27% you see in pt on the back of uh, you know summer and also the fact that it was election so uh, you know you saw that kind of surge in demand in psf uh, uh, 9% uh, was driven by the fact that there was we saw we did see downstream operating rates improve and therefore by definition the psf uh, volumes went up but on the converse side on polyester filament yarn we saw a fall of 4% because of uh, uh, because of fabric uh, imports that we saw on uh, this is the transportation cracks uh, uh, here you can see that year on year gas oil and atf has been year on year has been big little bit lower but not too much uh, while on gasoline you can see year on year cracks uh, come off uh, very sharply as we saw uh, earlier on um, the uh, q on q has been more pronounced in all the three products which is the 37% that i talked to you about and uh, in q q it was really driven by the fact that we did see uh, supply uh, glut in asia because of the red sea tensions because of the high freight and therefore uh, lower exports and therefore there was a significant surplus that we saw in this part of the world so that explains the sharp fall there on the polymer delta uh, you know uh, as i was mentioning uh, polymer deltas were between around 17% lower on a year on year basis though on qoq basis uh, it uh, improved by about 7% uh, pvc specifically went up very sharply at about 17% and as i mentioned about the ethane crack uh, economics was pretty favorable here polyester has been uh, year on year 15% fall um, more driven by uh, weaker global demand and also much slower china recovery q on q has been uh, you know uh, just about a percent uh, improvement there we did see improvement in px margins Uh, because of shutdowns uh, pta margins uh, have remained under pressure but uh, we did see pfi and psf margin improve with uh, uh, chinese uh, downstream demand here uh, the there has been an increase in throughput as you can see from 70.1 to 17.7 uh, we continue to do the things which were uh, which are effectively controllable in terms of maximizing our primary and major secondary units by continuing to focus on uh, crude sourcing by uh, maximizing fuel sales domestically uh, also by uh, you know uh, in terms of optimizing uh, px versus gasoline there and also given the uh, quarter on quarter improvement in deltas you saw we maximize production in petrochemical side and uh, we continue to sweat the uh, gasifier complex to full capacity overall when you look at the business and environment uh, this is uh, here global oil demand is expected to normalize this year at about a million barrels per day as you know it was pretty strong last year at about 2.1 overall uh, when you see uh, in the more in the near term to medium term uh, there are factors that play driving season demand uh, normally uh, you know results in uh increase in demand for uh, gasoline uh, international aviation uh, you know expectation of uh, further recovery there 
Um, it also, there are possibilities of uh, active hurricane season. It is now, uh, people are talking about it uh, looking high with high probability. So, as you know, uh, almost a million barrels per day of capacity, uh, you know, uh, gets affected uh, when, when there is a hurricane there. Uh, then if there is a ban on Russian gasoline exports, given their shortfall, then that could also have an impact in terms of, uh, you know, the deltas for gasoline. Overall, uh, downstream, as I mentioned, yes, you are seeing a gradual improvement with uh, demand recovering and also, importantly, the uh, uh, slowing pace of uh, new supply. And the fact that India demand both for fuels and downstream is uh, is expected to be remain fairly resilient. So that should be uh, that should aid in terms of margin improvement. Overall, from a challenges point of view, clearly it is all about uh, geopolitical tensions in the Middle East, in Russia, Ukraine, the uh, disruptions in the Red Sea, the you know the impact on freight. So all these have kept the markets volatile and. Uh, also, in the short term, increasing supply with whatever balance capacities that come in, um, um, as well as the fact that some of the refineries will come back from from uh, post maintenance. But it's also when you see the last two years, the almost two and a half million barrels of uh, refining capacity that got added. It's been a very very long time since such so much of capacity has come in. And going forward, uh, it is not very obvious that, uh, you know, there will be uh, surges in this kind of capacity increase, so we'll have to wait and watch them. Overall, uh, that is really some of the thought process by saying that structurally refining looks uh, looks uh, strong. Just to summarize, it has been a strong operating quarter, uh, you know, consumer businesses and upstream fully negating the impact of a weak O2C. Overall, uh, as I was highlighting, uh, fuel markets, uh, you know, likely to remain supported by seasonal drivers, demand drivers for gasoline, uh, for ATF demand, also because of weather and uh, geopolitical disruption. So these things have an impact on the overall price and deltas. The fact that there is strong demand uh, for uh, in India helps. And also the fact that, uh, you know, thanks to a fairly integrated O2C operation, you know, we, we can leverage that kind of uh, integration there. On the consumer side, uh, we, we are strengthening our market leadership in in a, in a structurally long-term growth business. Um, uh, Dinesh talked about the whole focus on tech platform, on supply chain, on distribution. Um, this is uh, all this to both uh, sustain growth momentum in both near and medium term. On geo side, uh, clearly the benefits on uh, uh, the traction that we are seeing in home and enterprises and the fact that uh, the impact of revised tariff will, will start getting reflected in the coming quarters. And finally, the balance sheet remains strong. As you saw, net debt was lower than what it was in the previous quarter. Um, with this, uh, you know, I come to the end of my presentation. Thank you so much for being here.